sclerosis. And if we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha, and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And I know people are going to start arriving here. It just takes a couple of seconds, but the, this is a really awesome, awesome case study that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to be sharing different types of case studies because every student is different, but there are a lot of pictures of worms in this. So what's really helpful about this is that it helps us to see what some of us are really dealing with. We really cannot visualize or understand the level of parasitic infestation that we're dealing with when we have chronic disease. And so there are multiple different types of infections that cause MS and other chronic diseases. And today, you're going to see a live case study of somebody right now who is in the Live Disease Free Academy who is treating the infections and you'll hear the amazing improvements that she's been having. So make sure to type in your questions and your comments and if you're listening to a replay, we will be answering your questions. So make sure to type your questions in the question box. So this is a student, a wellness champion in the Live Disease Free Academy and that is a course where I help people to recover from chronic disease. We've developed the Live Disease Free System. We have the Live Disease Free Eating Plan. And the whole premise around this is really in preparing ourselves to treat and then treating the chronic parasitic infestations that are causing our disease symptoms. So you will be quite shocked what you see today. And I will give you warning, so if you don't want to see the parasite pictures, I will give you a heads up. But please look at them because if you're sick, it really helps you to appreciate what you could be dealing with also, why you're feeling so terrible. So just wanted to say, hello, you guys are there. Awesome. So I'm just going to go over to my slides. If you enjoy me sharing these educational talks and lectures and research with you, case studies that we're doing, make sure to give this a thumbs up, like it. And if you are on YouTube, make sure to uh, hit the notification bell so that you'll know, be notified when I do go live. And also please, um, like I said, like it and share it and subscribe on YouTube, Live Disease Free. So this is a student and actually I'm going to go over to my slides right now because I've got all the information about her there and then we'll come back and discuss it after. So this is case study number two. Okay, why is it not moving? There we go. Case study number two. This is a student in the Live Disease Free Academy who is recovering from multiple sclerosis. She is 61 years old. She is retired a mother and a grandmother. So she's a, still a very busy lady or she would like to be busy and that's the whole point of recovering. She has six children, 17 grandchildren and her symptoms, the neurological symptoms, they started in 2018. So I'm gonna be sharing different case studies with you. The reason I want like hers is because this is in real time. This is where she has been at for the last three months and you'll kind of hear where she's at today right now with the treatment part, but <clears throat> she is catching it earlier, which is very, very helpful. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2019. Her symptoms that she shared with me, poor digestion, craving, fatigue, foggy head, poor memory, poor balance, spasticity, so that's the cramping in the legs, uh, like a permanent Charlie horse, or they come and go at the start and then eventually they stay with us. Numbness, weakness in, our, in her legs, bladder issues, vision was impacted also, and she can walk without an aid. So she still has her mobility, but she's really starting to, it's starting, the MS is starting to affect her mobility. She had multiple MRIs for the MS diagnosis, and she was on Ocrevus, which is a chemo drug that is very popular now for treating multiple sclerosis. And she, these infusions, she's getting them once every six months. What I find really shocking is how, common people are being put on Gokrevis on chemotherapy treatments for multiple sclerosis so early on. So there are a lot of people that before, because Ocrevus is quite serious when you're dealing with 
chemotherapy drugs, they would first try the other disease-modifying drugs that did not have such significant adverse effects or risks of cancer, etc. But I see, and as I speak to many, many people that are suffering with multiple sclerosis, that they're many of them are on Ocrevus, and some of them, that's the first drug that they've been put on. So I just, that's something that I've seen, which is kind of concerning to me because it is such a severe drug. So she thought she was a healthy person. She had six children. Um, she always had a healthy lifestyle. She prided herself and she didn't have to take medication and she just took care of herself. She ate healthy. So this disease uh, diagnosis really was a shock to her. So she reached out to integrative practitioners and she worked with chiropractors, acupuncture, and Chinese herbs, essential oils, exercising, and probably tightening up on her eating plan, also her diet. But nothing really made a difference. And I hear that all the time. People can spend up to one hundred dollars to $300,000 on their health with various different types of treatments. But they're just not getting better. And somebody's asking, what country does she live in? So she lives in the United States. And we have students all over the world, but this student lives in the United States. Good question. Uh, that I was going to mention too. So when you look back on her health history, she thought she was quite healthy. She was very active, lots of kids, right? Raising six children and now lots of grandkids. She did have antibiotics in her past a couple of times for strep throat. She did have pneumonia at one point. She had a plugged ear. She had surgery to remove nodules in the sinuses. To me, that is like a very big sign of fungal infection because that is, with the research, has been really showing that fungus loves to live in the sinuses if we have a lot of sinus issues. She's had a couple of urinary tract infections throughout her life, but not overly, not to the point where we have significant multiple sclerosis where we end up with a lot of bladder issues, but just warning signs that she was dealing with infection in that area too. And also mastitis. And I had that too when I was nursing my, uh, I think it was my last child, I had that also. So she had that with each of her six babies, otherwise really healthy. So she just started the Live Disease Free Academy in September, or May, the 27th, the end of May this year. And in her first four weeks, so healthy eating is very relative. We, it, a lot of people think they're eating healthy and we, and they probably are, but it really depends on the state of the microbes that are inside of you as to if what you're eating is really helping your health or hindering your health. So for her, in the first couple, three weeks, she was starting to learn and follow the Live Disease-Free Eating Plan. And she realized that a lot of the healthy foods that she was eating was making her feel worse. So although fruit and honey and different things like that and, and a lot of carbohydrate-rich foods can be healthy if they're not processed and if we eat moderate amounts, when we have a parasitic infestation, that really feeds the problem. So she found that that those kind of foods would make her feel more weak and depressed. And so she was starting to, you know, as she was learning the eating plan, really taking those foods out and going more low carb food and enough protein, like adequate amounts of animal protein, low carbs, and also healthy fats. And she also realized that she needed to eat more calories. So it's a bit of an adjustment when you move towards the Live Disease Free Eating Plan if you haven't done low carb before. A lot of people have done keto, they've done paleo, so it's then it's a little bit of fine tweaks, but some people haven't done that. And then it does take a little bit, you know, a couple, at least a couple weeks to change up the eating plan and get used to it. So we have to eat a lot more too when you're eating bread or different concentrated complex carbohydrates. There's a lot more calories in them. They're more filling. And so we don't, eat as much. But when we're eating low carb vegetables and animal protein and healthy fats, we have to eat a lot. So she realized that she needed to eat more calories for more energy. And then she was starting to work through in the first few weeks, it's the eating plan, and also supporting the body. I've shared lots of videos on all of that. So this is where she started to introduce a binder, 
orally to help to suck up the poisons in the intestines, to carry them out, and working on resolving constipation. Then, so going to the next one. Okay, why is this not going here? Let's see. It's not, there we go. All right, so week five and week six. That's where she really started feeling better. So she got the hang of things. She got the carbs down low enough and was really decreasing the food to the parasitic infestation she was dealing with. And she had no idea what she was dealing with. You will see very shortly. And, but she didn't notice a huge physical change. So as far as those symptoms that I was sharing, she didn't notice that she had a lot of improvement with her mobility and um, strength in her legs and spasticity and all of that. But she did notice that emotionally she was happier. And of course, all the students, they just want to get to the treatment phase, right? So they're, she's following the eating plan, supporting the body. And we say that an average student usually is ready to treat anywhere between three to six weeks in the program. So she was at this place where she and what we really recommend is to follow the eating plan, start feeling better, supporting the body, and then you can start introducing different types of things that will kill the or treat the bad microbes that are making us sick. So she was ready to start building the plan for treatment at this stage here. She ordered the oxidizing agent, which I talk about, uh, I can't talk in detail about any treatments here, but I'm just sharing that it's been really helpful orally and enemas, especially the enemas, because you're going to see what came out of her with the enemas. It's very safe. It's very helpful. It's like an oxygen type therapy. And also she started to incorporate raw garlic with her meal. So this is where when the students are starting to feel a little better from the prep phase, then I say, go ahead and start to bring in raw garlic, chopping it up, putting it on a teaspoon, start to eat your food. Then also, once, you're, once you've started to eat your food, then you can take the garlic off your spoons, swish it down with water, don't have to chew it, and then just keep eating. So that way the raw garlic is sandwiched in your meal. Students will start with half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, whatever they can handle, and they'll work their way up. So she started to add that in, and raw garlic is really hot. That's why we have it with meals. But it's really, it has a lot of antimicrobial properties. It's very antifungal, anti-small parasite, anti-lime. Very, very awesome. An awesome natural antibiotic. So the students will start to bring in some raw garlic with their meals. That way they're starting to treat some of the smaller bad microbes in the digestive tract. And then she's carrying on with different parts in the program, making sure her water's filtered. And looking at the supplements she's taking, this is where students will simplify and just go to a plant sourced multivitamin mineral, maybe some extra calcium and vitamin D3 if they're not getting enough sunshine. And then some electrolytes, especially when we're doing enemas, that's always a good thing to do. And this, oh shoot, I forgot to mention. <laughs> okay, this is the first parasite picture, okay? So there's a parasite picture coming. All right, so here we go. There will be a lot more, but this is the first one. So this is really interesting. So before the oxidizing agent came in, she thought, well, I just wanna practice with a water enema. A lot of our students have never done enemas before. I know some people that are have been doing integrative work, they've done coffee enemas, but myself included, I had not done an enema before. So she thought, I'll just do a water enema. And following, this is what she said, I did a water enema for practice. The following day, I passed this worm, only taking a spoonful of raw garlic with each meal. So a couple of pointers here, just taking raw garlic, if you're eating lots of carbs, probably won't be enough to have this worm come out and die. But because she was also very low carb, making it miserable or mi more miserable for these worms, they're not getting all the food that they want because they don't like protein as much and the low carb vegetables, they thrive on carbohydrates and sugar. So they're weaker. And then the garlic, so she ended up passing this just with a water enema, which is amazing. So she was pretty excited. I want to share too that when I work with students, I don't always get this many parasite pictures. Sometimes I get a lot more parasite pictures from a student. Sometimes I don't get any. Some students feel comfortable, you know, 
taking pictures, and we're really grateful that they do. They can share it with their doctor. That's helping to bring change. Also, it really helps us to appreciate the level of infestation that many of us are suffering with. But some students just don't want don't want to they they're squeamish and they don't want to be digging around for worms in the toilet. So we just really appreciate the students that do that because it's really helping us to understand what we're dealing with. So this is what she discovered just with the practice, and that really excited her a lot. So then week eight, she started the oxidizing agent orally, slowly, but also daily enemas. And she started passing worms daily. And she said, now I'm definitely feeling a difference in energy. So this is where she's starting to, um, really starting to notice a, a shift. Week nine, so again, she's not really treating the way that we treat fully with the parasite drugs, but she's just using the oxidizing agent is, it is killing large and small parasites in the large intestines. It can't reach the small intestines. So this is what's all living in her large intestines what's coming out from the enemas. I'm going to share quite a few pictures with you. Week nine, so like week eight and nine, she's starting to pass worms daily. So when I share the pictures with you, just understand that probably one picture is from a day. It's not that she passed all of everything on one slide in one day. It was probably, you know, you, what the students will do is they'll, they'll take the worms that they pass. Let me backtrack. So if they do the oxidizing agent, let's say, one night and then if they do the next night they do one or morning and morning it's the following day that the the worms will come out with the water at the beginning and so that's what you'll she'll she put down on a piece on a toilet paper so you'll actually see what came out so with each picture it was a different day is what I'm assuming that's pretty standard and then week nine Definitely, this was my best week. I haven't felt this good for probably six months. I have a ton more energy and I'm getting so much more done without feeling wiped out. My worst symptom um, since getting sick was this buzzing feeling that was in her head. Um, and she's only had that slightly this week on the ninth week. All right. Oh, sorry. Parasite pictures. So hopefully you saw that caution. Parasite pictures up next. All right. So again, this would be like one day and another day of what she's passing. And when the students are passing the worms, we notice that there's something called ropeworm, which we don't know exactly what it is. So there is kind of almost like a community of, of parasites. So they will pass worms, they will pass ropeworms, they will pass mucus, they will pass biofilm. So sometimes around the worms, we see that there is this like mucus around them too. And so you can see all of this stuff is coming out of her and sometimes worms are embedded in stool, etc. So onto another pic, there's quite a few pictures. So it's just amazing for her to share. Sometimes like on the one on the right hand side, we see that often too, where it is kind of like ribbed and I'm not sure what kind of a parasite, but I do see that commonly. The one on the left hand side, that looks like a definitely a, a long worm that's sometimes twisted over itself. But again, those would be two different days of doing the enemas. And this is what's making her feel so good. These are three different days here, three different pictures. And I'm not sure if the one on the very left hand side at the very bottom that almost looks like an intestinal fluke. The intestinal flukes are flatworms and they're kind of opaque. This one might be a, more of an immature form. They're usually wider though, the ones that we've seen. They can be three inches long and they can be, you know, less than an inch wide and flat, but they're, you can't see through them, but they're really rubbery. And the next, so yeah, so this again, when we're doing these, the, these, uh, this is what's coming out of her large intestine by doing enemas. And then this is another two days again. And on the left hand side, definitely, you can definitely see there's worms. And on the right hand side, definitely worms. So sometimes there's mucus, sometimes. So on the bottom right hand side, it could be kind of mucus or biofilm. I've talked a lot about biofilm before in previous videos. That is a slimy kind of material that they hide under the different large and small parasites and and lime and different bacteria will hide under that protects them 
But to me, it looks a little bit more like mucus. So we do see a, a combination of worms and mucus. There's, a lot of times there is mucus present around where the worms are living. It's kind of like our immune system dealing with it. And then this is another day. So these are all different days. She passed a lot of worms. So you can appreciate you know, why she felt so horrible with all these neurological symptoms. So going on to the next, so week 10, she's shared, so, you know, she's passing daily these, all these worms. And she shared, I survived a crazy busy week. Normally, it would have put me right down. We had grandkids all weekend besides an 80th birthday party that we put on for my father-in-law at our house today. I'm so grateful for the strength and the energy um, that I had to accomplish all of this. I could not have done this two months ago. And then week 11, I've had a lot more energy, less buzzing in my head. And I rate myself now a six, whereas at the beginning I was a three. So I'm sure she's saying 10 is ideal and she's at a six. And so she hasn't even started using any antimicrobial herbs other than some garlic and just doing the oxidizing enemas and taking it orally. Um, the only physical discomfort that she still has at this point, week 11, is numbness in her left hand, which is only very little now. So the numbness has improved. All the symptoms have improved, including numbness. Week 12, I, um, I've i really had a great week again, definitely my best yet. We were tending another set of grandkids this weekend and had them over for two nights. I really could not have done this. Uh, for, uh, for the last two weekends, my kids must be able to tell a difference in me because they rarely ask me considering my health. My energy level is so much higher. Besides having grandkids, I weeded the entire front yard and still felt great. I'm so pumped. I've come so far in just three months. So in the Live Disease Free Academy, students work at their own pace. And usually students are into a first treatment with the parasite drugs within the first three months, but it's up to the student. So with her pace, with her lifestyle, with her health, and like some students, they take longer, some students are quicker, but generally students will, will get into at least one treatment cycle. So she's ready now to start treating with everything she's passed, but she's super pumped with how far she's come. Week 13, I've had another great week again with great energy and outlook. My husband commented that he hasn't seen me like this in a very long time. This, I feel like the game changer has been the oxidizing enemas, seeing so many worms every morning. So she's doing them in the mornings, the, the enemas. Seeing so many worms every morning is still so shocking to me. I can't imagine where so many could be inside this little body and they just keep coming. Every day, I think it's, it's got to be the end of them as I've done this for six weeks now. Um, this is so insane. So that is amazing. And then just to finish it off here. So right now she has working with practitioner ordering the round of parasite treatments, waiting for that to come. And she ordered chlorella. So chlorella is something that helps to bind mycotoxins, bind certain metals. It's very rich in nutrients. It's just a really great natural binder. She has said she's not going to continue with Ocrevus for sure because she's this is what's getting her better and she's really concerned about the adverse effects. She shared, I look forward to getting better. I, I was just telling my husband that if this is how I feel the rest of my life, I would be thrilled. There is still room for improvement and I look forward to that and I'm so happy at how this program has improved my life already. My worst symptoms were in my head. My worst symptoms were my head issues, which are basically gone. Energy is definitely up and the numbness is still there, but only in the tips of my fingers now, which is amazing. So she is still treating. Um, she is literally just going to start, but because she's had so much success and cleared out so many parasites already, she's probably going to be one of the students that within, you know, within an, maybe one treatment cycle that she's almost symptom free, she will definitely continue with at least four, like what the expert doctors are saying is for somebody who isn't really seriously chronically sick with a severe chronic disease like ALS, Parkinson's, MS, they might do four to six treatments. But for those of us that are 
you know, let's say we're quite disabled, it might take a year to a year and a half of cycling through with the doses that we're using, which are safe and effective, but they're we're dealing with biofilms, we're dealing with immature forms. They're, you know, all the way into the central nervous system, the smaller ones. So for her, she might do six treatment cycles, and but she might feel symptom-free even after one or two treatment cycles with the parasite drugs, which is really exciting. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is over this it is really amazing. Uh that's why I have to do these case studies. It's it just I just have to share this with you guys. Okay, I'm gonna come back. <clears throat> so it is such a pleasure to share this with you. I'm going to go to your comments for a minute here. So I just hosted my live masterclass training. I only do this three times a year and I hosted it last week on Wednesday and then I did an encore for all the students or the people that could not attend on Saturday because there's a lot of people in Europe that can't attend at five o'clock Pacific because it's too late for them. If you didn't get a chance to join me, make sure to listen to the replay because it's amazing and it will really help you to understand what you're dealing with. And then, so go through that. And if this is the first time you've ever met me, go to YouTube. We have a playlist of the eating plan. I've got a, I, over 70 videos there on infections. So I'm sure we have a playlist on infections and the eating plan and successes. So you can hear people sharing their experience in treating. And then if you get to the place where you're like, Pam, this makes sense to me. I, I can understand why I feel so lousy. Then make sure to watch my masterclass training. At the very end, you can fill out a form you can chat with me, you can join. We've had quite a number of new students joining, the new wellness champions. They are going to finish off this year with a bang and start the new year just in a whole different place by, because they're treating these parasites. But make sure to watch the masterclass training and you can join us and become a wellness champion when you're ready. All right, but if you do fill out the form, make sure to watch the Coachathon because the Coachathon talks all about the academy, the cost, the details, what we do, how we get access to treatments, practitioners, etc. All right. Okay, I am going to go to your questions here. Hello, hi Patricia, hi Maureen, hi Al Alia or Alia. Hello, hi Ashley. You did find me, yeah, and I apologize that we were a few minutes late. There was this update that I didn't, I wasn't aware of, and it just would not allow me to move forward. So we figured it out. You have to figure things out on the fly sometimes. Hi, uh, Dean, Leah. Hello. You're very welcome. I'm, the whole, I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. Audrey, you have a mess. Um, you cut out many foods from your diet. You're still in pain, and you feel weak, and you're in a wheelchair. So just please be aware that, Audrey, that you can see from the infection pictures, the parasite pictures, you can understand why you feel horrible. Even if we ate no carbs, even if we ate no food, our body would start to break down our muscle and it would keep a specific blood sugar level to keep us alive. You cannot starve these parasites with diet. We can make their life more miserable by decreasing the food to them, but we definitely can't kill them. We have to treat them. So those enemas, they were not just water enemas. It was something that actually was physically killing and releasing them. And the same thing, so two, remember that the large intestines is only about five feet long. And then we have over 20 feet of small intestines, and that can be full of parasites too. So we have to treat from the top down with the parasite drugs, herbs, etc. And from the bottom up, that helps us to recover a lot quicker. So awesome. Yeah, so you have not treated well enough. So you have to do more treatment. So which country does, okay, I answered that one. She lives in the United States. Hello, Amy. Hi, Danya. Does anyone, uh, do anyone working in Canada? So my students are all over the world, the wellness champions. So we have wellness champions in Canada, all over Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States, and Greece, Israel. Hi, Jamal. Yes, I live in Canada. Uh, okay, you really don't think these are worms? 
yes, you're right. Some of it can be mucus, some of it can be catar, but some of them are worms. And even in the mucus, etc., there are small parasites, there's large parasites, some we can't see. So the fact is it all has to come out. And the exciting thing is getting all that out just in the short few weeks that she did that in like 13 weeks, she's at a whole different place with her life. Yes, the worms definitely are coming out in the stool, Jamal. How many days in a row do you do the enemas? So Ashley, the key with the enemas is that it's just, it's used to help the students to be more regular if they're dealing with constipation. And it's also used, the enemas are really helpful in breaking up the biofilms and also um, releasing and killing big and small parasites, a lot of the ones we can't see. But the students will use them as needed. There's no harm in using them. And so during the treatment phase, especially when they're using the parasite drugs, they will often um, use it daily, once a day, um, if they need to do it twice a day. So sometimes they'll do an enema and they'll feel really good after it. But then after maybe an hour or two, they'll start to feel like, oh, like agitated or stomach issue, whatever. And so they'll do another enema then and they release the worm for sure then. So they just use it as needed. But again, it's by itself, it's not enough. We have to treat, remember the 22 feet in the large intestine, plus Dr. Alan McDonald showing that these worms are in our blood, they're in the central nervous system. So we have to treat systemically to really recover, to get that high, high level of health. But this is just the start of what she's doing. So she hasn't even finished the, the main treatment part yet. She's just starting that. So this is like real time, real life example of somebody who's recovering. And how much greater is that than using chemotherapy, right? <laughs> Hi, Rick. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Lorena. So you want to do the plan. So if you do want to look at the Academy, the Live Disease Free Academy, Lorena, then make sure to um, click on the link. You'll find the link. We'll hopefully post it with your comment. I'm not sure. It, it's not telling me where people are from, whether they're on Facebook or YouTube, but we have both listening. So what you do is just listen to my masterclass training at the end. Then you can fill out a form and then make sure to watch for an email from us. And it's a congratulations email and there will be a link to a coachathon. Listen to that because that explains the entire academy, all the steps we're taking, everything you wanna know. And then you can chat with me or some people are just joining and then they still chat with me after. I do want to get to know every student that is joining. I always do that because I we're going to be working hard together and I want to know your history and answer your questions of what you've done, what your symptoms are, what you've been through. And yeah, I'm excited to support you. Ruth, are you treating MS or the gut inflammation from parasites? Well, that's a good question. If you follow any of my work, I believe, and a lot of people are recovering from this, and there's more and more evidence that multiple sclerosis and all chronic disease is stemming from chronic infections that start in the gut, in the intestines, but in time, they move out throughout our body. So we get, uh, with Dr. Al maybe you haven't seen, but Dr. Alan McDonald has shared a lecture where he's a pathologist in the United States, and he has found many, many small worms in the spinal fluid of people that have MS. So they make their way out of the intestines, through the blood, they cross the blood-brain barrier. So we're dealing with large parasites, we're dealing with small parasites, large worms, small worms, protozoa, which are single-celled parasites, fungal overgrowth, it all has to come out. So some of what she was passing could be biofilm, it could be fungal overgrowth too, like fungal type colonies and all of this has to come out. And as people are getting rid of it, they're just feeling better and better. And she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and they were giving her an MS drug. So hello, Alaska, Jana. Hi, Deborah. Um, I can't talk about the oxidizing enema. If I do, I will be removed from the platform. So I can't talk about it, unfortunately. I, it is not fair, but this is the only way I can help people. So this is what I have to do, unfortunately. So Ruth, the whole bottom line is in order to recover from multiple sclerosis or other chronic diseases, 
we have to treat infections and we use a holistic approach and that's what we do in the academy where we stop feeding the infection we support the body in various ways then we start to treat the infections then we still build a healthy lifestyle and we're changing cleaning up the environment so we have to do all those steps and that is how people are recovering and ms is caused by infections for sure Okay, what kind of filtered water should we use? Students sometimes will just start with activated charcoal. If you live in a place where you have chlorine or fluoride, then you would like to get the fluoride out because it's pretty toxic. But even activated charcoal, reverse osmosis would be better, but that's definitely a start, activated charcoal. We would avoid, um, Gail, we would avoid all green tea, anything that contains caffeine. Uh, the honey will feed the infections. Any caffeine will make the infections a lot more active. It stimulates them. The ginseng is fine, but I definitely would not have green tea. Thank you so much for your kind words. Hi, Rob. So how much will this cost generally? Watch the masterclass training. Um, and then the coachathon, and it explains everything there. I talk about the, like the drug treatments, what they cost. They're very reasonable. On average, they're about $100 per drug per cycle. And that comes from a pharmacist. And you would test well, usually for three to five parasite drugs. So usually about three. And as far as other things, we do very minimal supplements, just plant source, vitamin, mineral, etc. So and you do most of the work yourself. That's why it is more cost effective than working solely with integrated practitioners, because you can do a lot of the work yourself and you can still work with them, but you make sure that you're only paying for things that you need. Hi, Mary Beth. Can you, can we ask our regular naturopath to help us? Um, so when when he's going to do the EAV test, you're going to spend a bunch of money and chances are he doesn't know what you're dealing with as far as the parasites. So you can do that. It's not harmful, but you're going to spend a few hundred dollars and you're going to say, hmm, that didn't really help me much. So the only time that our students are using um, integrated practitioners for energy testing like that would be if they are ready to treat and they have samples and they bring the samples into the office and the in, the practitioner will test them to see which of those samples are most helpful for them in recovery. Like for the different types of parasites that they have, which treatments are best for them. That will be a good use of your money. But doing this, you'll find that you will just be spending money and you're not going to um, you know, they might find that you have, let's say your liver is stressed or you might have sensitivities or maybe metals or whatever, but your naturopath probably will not be able to, or maybe they can say, oh, you've got parasites, but you know that already. So that's the problem is that you're like, well, thank you. So I spent several hundred dollars and I know I have parasites, but you just want to know which treatments are most helpful for you. And he probably doesn't, you can ask him if they have parasite drug treatments. They usually in most states and most provinces, they cannot write prescriptions, so they won't have samples of the treatments in their office, and they don't have a lot of experience with them at all, period. So then you're just spending money and you're not really moving forward. And that's what we do in the academies. We really help the students to understand what they have to do to recover, keep it as, as lean economically as possible, just doing the bare important essential things to recover. And that will save you thousands and thousands of dollars in time for sure. So what I do is I help you to understand what you need. And then that way you can hone in on, you know, getting ready to treat and treating as soon as possible and saving a lot of money on not doing a lot of things that really are not going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. Hello from Arizona, Jillian. Hi, Ruth. You're very welcome. What electrolytes do you recommend? You can find them in health food stores or you can find them in drug stores. Just make sure that it doesn't have like any ingredients that should be avoided, fillers, sugar, starches, etc. 
It's just basically replenishing different electrolytes. And we do take some extra minerals too. And how do you test a quadriplegic? So if this is energy testing, what they will do is they'll usually have um, either their assistant or maybe one of your family members goes in with you. And this is for children too. So they can just literally put their, your family member can put their hand on you and then they would energy test through the family member or through the person in the office. So that works really well too. Okay, so I think those are some of the questions that came in. Um, we're almost at an hour here. So I just really hope that you appreciated that. It really helps you to see how quickly people can have a turnaround when they're treating the cause. And that's what we focus on with the live disease free approach is really helping people to hone in on the dysbiosis. They're severely out of balance with a severe, severe parasitic infestation, multiple infections. So it's not just worms. We're not just looking for large worms. We don't care what's coming out as long as it's all coming out the bad and they're feeling better through. And of course, the treatments we do care because they have to use specific treatments that are more geared towards what they're dealing with what they were infected with but as they do that they recover and it's amazing and they get their life back in months not years so again if you like what i've shared with you and you would like to attend more of my master class trainings and different facebook lives and youtube lives make sure to if you're on youtube hit the notification bell subscribe if you're on Facebook please give it a like and share it please help us to get this out people need to see why they're fe feeling so horrible we need to get this information out so please you can be a wellness champion and help me get the word out and if you're ready if you're ready to be a wellness champion if you're ready to treat these horrible infections you're dealing with make sure to watch my master class training and you can reach out and you can get started just as the new wellness champions have this week. Until next week, we will, and next week I'm going to be sharing research, uh, a study. So I'll, we'll give you some details about that next week. So until we talk again, take care and bye-bye for now.